Good evening, good evening. That clock on the wall is saying 7.30. Happy 4th of July to all of you that are watching tonight or this evening or whatever time you may be watching this program. I'm glad and I hope and pray that you had a tremendous day. That's right. Many of you were off work. Many of you were relaxing. Amen. Many of you were fellowshipping. Many of you were eating. Many of you were enjoying family. Whatever your state has been today, I hope you had a pleasant day, a great day. I hope you are ready for our Bible study on tonight. That's right. Tuesday night is our Bible study, but tonight, of course, I'm going to give you a message just for tonight. Then on next Tuesday, we'll go into a deep Bible study. But tonight, I just want to talk to you because again, amen, this is indeed a celebration of the independence, amen, of our country. And of course, amen, later on tonight in different cities, in different states, amen, in different places, fireworks will be going off as we celebrate our liberty naturally wise, but you and I who are in Christ, we know we have liber liberty spiritually that always, always elevates us as a people. And we've been elevated through and by what Jesus Christ has done. I want you to get on the phone quickly, text somebody, call somebody, email them. Amen. Let them know, hey, that Bible study is on the air. I'm asking that the phone tree, get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, email those that you have been chosen and called and selected to make them aware that it's Bible study night. Don't forget when you come on, amen, hit that thumbs up button. That's right. Hit that thumbs up button as well as hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button so that every time we come on, you will be made aware of the fact that we are on. And you can follow us as we do different things and have different special programs. You won't miss any of it. We don't want you to miss a thing. Life is too short and Jesus is coming again. And we understand that now is the time for us to really, really go after God, really go after the things of God and really reach lost people. I'm telling you, we had an awesome move of God this past Sunday. That's right. We had an awesome move of God. Amen. And Mother Brown, who was indeed one of our mothers who gone on to be with the Lord, along with her family members, have been praying for her son. She had one son that she wanted to see saved. And thank God this past Sunday, he came to the house of God and gave his life to Christ. So we celebrate his victory as well as we had a little boy, Frederick, who's six years old, gave his life to Christ. And we thank God for my cousin. Amen. Coming back, renewing her vows to the Lord. Amen. Yes. We thank God for Shirley. Amen. Well, you missed that move of God, but hey, Thank God because of Facebook and YouTube, you can go and watch it. It's part two of a message entitled, God brings everything with him. That when God comes on the scene, there's a manifestation of who he is and he doesn't leave anything out. He brings everything he is and everything he's about with him. So when you get God, guess what? You get the full package and you want his full package. Amen. When it comes to people, certain things you want them to leave behind and certain things you want them to bring with them. But when God comes into your life, he brings everything with him. In fact, when you really, amen, connect with someone, you really have to accept the full package. Even if you don't like everything that comes with it, you love that person enough because love covers a multitude of sin. So I pray you being loved today, you enjoying your day. Shout out to all the July people, amen, who are celebrating the birthday this month. We send a special shout out to you, amen. I think Sister Demetrius, she celebrated her birthday on July the 1st. Happy birthday again, Sister Demetrius, amen. Her birthday was Saturday. Happy birthday to you. And then I want to send a special shout out and a happy birthday to Sister Tasha Aline, her birthday is today. today. Happy birthday, Tasha Aline. And then I want to send a special 
a shout out to a man of God that we just had an opportunity to celebrate with him, Bishop Jesse Blaylock. His birthday was on June the 30th, but they celebrated it today. So again, amen, a happy birthday to Bishop Jesse Blaylock, a good brother from another mother. Amen. We thank God for him. All right, let's go in the prayer and get in this word. Father, thank you for what you're going to say, do, how you're going to move tonight. Thank you for thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips, revelation, knowledge, let it flow. Let yokes be destroyed and burdens be removed in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Shout out to Vincent Bellamy. Amen. Curtis Bryant, Cedric Wooten, all you great people of God. Amen. We salute you in the name of the Lord. Listen, tonight, because it is again a celebration of liberty, a celebration of independence. I want to talk to you tonight and hopefully I can get it done tonight. So next Tuesday we can really go into Bible study. But tonight, just want to kind of stir your heart. I want to talk to you off a subject entitled Break Free and as a subtitle Slavery versus Leadership. I want to talk to you tonight on this 4th of July while fireworks and all that stuff is booming in the air later on this evening. I want to talk to you off Break Free and as a subtitle Slavery versus Leadership. Slavery versus leadership. Now we understand, amen, as I talk about slavery versus leadership, we know that black people as well as most people are free physically, but this slavery versus leadership is also a mindset, a way of thinking, a way of doing things. God wants his people set free. That's why he sent Jesus, so that sin and unrighteousness will no longer have dominion over us, that we will be made free in Christ, free as men and women of God. We will be liberated from the bondages of the enemy. And instead of operating like a slave, we could operate like, like leaders. You and I were created to lead. We were created to guide. We were created to command. We were created to dominate. We were created to rule. What did I just say? You and I were created to lead. You and I were created to guide. You and I were created to direct, to command, to dominate or have dominion in the earth. However, the devil had it fixed so that we were born in Adam, born in sin, shaping in iniquity. And we operated with a slave mentality rather than functioning as leaders the way that God really wanted us to be. And because of us operating as slaves rather than leaders, it set us back in many ways. When a person doesn't operate as a leader, it sets him back spiritually. It sets him back financially. It sets him back mentally. It sets him back socially because he's operating as a slave rather than a leader. And so we're talking about breaking free or break free slavery versus leadership because there are people who are saved, who are born again, who are still operating like they're slaves, who still operating like a person who's in bondage rather than a leader or operating with a leadership mentality the way that God wants us to operate. OK, let's go to Genesis 15. Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14. Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14. The Bible said that he said unto Abram, this is before his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. He said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Notice they're going to be strangers in a land that they don't own, that not that is not theirs and shall serve them. So he's talking about his people was going to be strangers in the land and will serve the people who own and possess this land. And they shall afflict them 400 years 
and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Now we know God is speaking to Abram seeing in the future what was going to happen to his seed. We know that this happened to the Israelites, that the Israelites went into bondage to the Egyptians for over 400 years. That's a long time to be in bondage to another nation. This nation, Egypt, treated and afflicted the nation of Israel hard. They made it hard for them. They made it tough for them. They were very cruel to them. Pharaoh was a hard taskmaster. But God speaks about bringing the nation of Israel out after 400 years. They were going to come out and they were going to come out and serve God and they would come out with great substance. They would come out with great possession. They would come out with great wealth. So they would go from slaves, God bringing them out of slavery into being the leaders that God wanted them to be. God wants us to break free from everything that relates to bondage, from everything that relates to slavery, from everything that relates to being a slave or enslaved or bound. He wants us to function in life like kings and like rulers and like people who have dominion. And yet, because they had been in bondage for so long, they did not know how to shift from slavery to leadership. They did not know how to shift from having to beg to a people who had great wealth and great substance. Every last one of us have to know how to break free, to break free from strongholds that have been in our head and our thinking from one generation to another generation to another generation. 40, I mean, 400 years, that's several generations had seen slavery. Several generations had seen bondage. Several generations had no property. Several generations were cruelly treated and mistreated and misguided and had been bombarded with a mindset to stay bound and stay servants and stay enslaved. So when God brought them out of uh, Egypt, taking them through the wilderness on their way to the promised land, these people had a lot of issues. They had a lot of things to deal with. They had to break free from slavery to leadership. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at this in the message translation. Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14 in the message Bible. Listen at what it says. God said to Abram, know this, your descendants will live as outsiders in a land not theirs. They'll be enslaved, watch this, and beaten down. See, that's what the devil wants life to beat you down. He wants problems to beat you down. But I want you to rise up with that leadership mentality. I want you to rise up with the mindset of a leader. I want you to rise up with the mindset that I'm called to control and dominate and rule and govern and dictate where my life goes next. I'm called to do this. That's what I want to happen to you. Come on, type that in real quick. Say, I'm rising up. I want some people out there tonight. 
glory to God to say I'm rising up. I'm not rising up from the outside, but I'm rising up from the inside and I'm allowing the leadership that God has put on the inside of me to manifest itself because it's been stifled by a slavery mentality, by being in bondage for so long, by being imprisoned for so long that now that I'm free, I'm still acting like I'm a slave. Did you know that's what happened during the natural slavery of black men and black women? That some, even when they were free, did not know how to function, did not know how to behave because they had been slave for so long. So we have to understand that, hey, we are free. We are free in Christ. Jesus made this statement. He that the son of God or the son of man shall make free shall be free indeed, spiritually, psychologically, socially, economically. Hallelujah. Every area of your life, you got to break out. You got to break free. Listen at what he said. They're being enslaved and beaten down for 400 years. They then are punished their slave masters, which God did. Wiped out the nation of uh those Egyptian wiped out Pharaoh and his army. I punish their slave masters. Your offspring will march out of there loaded with plunder. Then they come out with silver and gold, just like God pronounced. But even though they were out physically, they still were out psychologically. Even though they were free physically, they still were not free mentally. So the devil doesn't care about you being free physically. The chains of most black people have been broken. We're free physically, but are we free mentally? Are we free spiritually? Because until we get free spiritually and until we get free mentally, we still are bound. We have no right now if we're in Christ to believe that a white person is superior to us in any way, that a Hispanic person is superior to us anyway. No, because why? We're free in our minds. And once you get free in your thinking, hallelujah, when you cast down those wicked imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and you understand that I am called to lead, I am called to guide, I am called to control. I am called to dominate. I will dominate every area of my life. I will rule every area of my life because I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer a prisoner of anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. I am bound to him. I am tied to him because he is indeed my master, my savior, my Lord. But I am free in my mind to serve God, to love God, to walk in the freedom that I have in the anointed one and the anointing. Hallelujah. We're talking about break free. Come on. You got to break free. These people, even though they were no longer on the Pharaoh, they still hadn't broken free from complaining and murmuring and bickering and arguing. And talking about who the greatest among. Do you not know that some of us, even black people today, still have a problem with other black people's success? We still got a crab mentality trying to pull each other down. We still resent each other today because of what slavery has done to some people's mind. Every time if a black person gets something, we tend to have a problem with it like he don't deserve it. He must have stole some. He must have been a crook in some way. Somehow we believe that people who look like us can't have the best, can't drive the best, can't live in the best. That's a slavery mentality that still, still hinders us. That even today, some of us, we don't know how to work together. We don't know how to pull our resources together. We don't know how to befriend each other. We still want to shoot each other, kill each other, rob each other. Amen. But won't do that 
to somebody of another race, but feel it's okay to kill each other. Get mad if another race kill us, but if we kill each other, no problem. If we shoot each other, no problem. Where did it come from? That's a slavery mentality, and we haven't broken free yet. But it's time for us to break free. It's time for us to operate like leaders, to operate like kings and queens and priests of the most high God, to operate like people who understand that it's the will of God that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul shall prosper. Oh, yeah. Some of us are driving Mercedes Benz driving business, but still are not free as it relates to loving each other, not free in our minds at being kind to each other. Where did that come from? That you will mistreat a, a black person, but you won't mistreat a white person, that you will mistreat and disrespect someone of your own color, but you will talk nice and respectable to somebody who's white. Why? Because you believe the white man is better. He must be. A, oh, oh, see, that's still a slave mentality. That's not leadership. Real leadership says, regardless of the color, I respect the office this person is occupying. I respect the function of this individual and I will respect them, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're Hispanic, because why? I don't have a slave's mentality. I have a leadership mentality. I am free from being a slave. I'm no longer in bondage to the devil and his works. I am free in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, I am moving forward. I'm not looking back. Hallelujah. Because I know my best is in front of me. Glory to God. See, if you keep looking back, that means you got a slave's mentality. They were brought out of Egypt, but then they were talking about going back to Egypt when problems showed up, when situations looked bleak, when situations looked dim. See, when you get a leadership mentality, you understand that even when situations look bad, I'm not going backwards. I'm going forward because I am headed to something bigger, something better, something big, something bold and something beautiful. My future is too big for me to look back at my past. I have great things in store and the enemy wants me to look back, but I refuse just like the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. Why is the Bible saying remember Lot's wife? Because Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. But you and I need to keep pressing, moving forward because that's what leaders do. Leaders keep moving. I said leaders keep moving forward. If you're going to lead, if you're going to direct, if you're going to control, if you're going to dominate, you got to keep thinking about your tomorrow, your future. Glory to God. All right. Look at this in the living Bible, the living Bible. Genesis 15, 13 and 14 says, then Jehovah told Abram. Your descendants will be oppressed as slaves in a foreign land for 400 years. But I will punish the nation that enslaves them. And at the end, they will come away with great wealth. Notice, see, just because you've been broke before you got saved. Now that you're saved, you ought to expect great wealth. See, if you're a leader, you don't expect to stay broke. If you're a leader, you don't expect your finances to keep living from paycheck to paycheck. If you are a leader, you understand that God wants you to have great wealth, that God doesn't want you worried or troubled about Friday's bill and you just got paid Thursday. He doesn't want you to get paid Thursday and be broke Friday. No, that's a slave's mentality. A, 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 a leader's mentality is that God wants me to have surplus. Mm. Who am I talking to tonight? You need to put that down about yourself. God wants me to have surplus, surplus, more than enough, more than enough to get stuff paid off, more than enough to get stuff fixed because God no longer wants me operating in life like a slave. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not just going to work because I'm broke. I'm going to my work because it is a duty that I have and I'm performing this duty and I'm laying up 
in my storehouses the blessings that God has provided for me. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? When you are a slave, you resent tithing. You resent giving because you're scared you're going to go broke. That's a slave mentality. But when you're a leader, you understand that being generous is part of my lifestyle, that I'm called to a generous life, that I'm called to give and it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I am liberated. Let the fireworks begin because I'm no longer a slave. I am called to be a leader. God has made us. To sit together with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. And I'm called to be the lender. <laughs> Woo! I said you're called to be the lender and not the borrower. You're called to be the head and not the tail. You're called to be above only and not beneath. God is saying, look at here. I'm delivering you from slavery. To bring you into leadership. Hallelujah. Woo. All right. Look at this. All right. Let's go to this Genesis 15 verses 13 and 14 in the ERV translation. The ERV says, then the Lord said to Abram, you should know this. Your descendants will live in a country that is not their own. They will be strangers there. The people there will make them slaves. Watch this. And be cruel. To them for 400 years. But then I will punish the nation. That made them slaves. Good grace of mighty. God said, I punish the nation. That made my people slaves. Because it was never God's intent. For his people to be slaves. But people allow sin. And darkness and death. To bring spiritually so. Amen. To bring them into bondage. Or bring them into captivity. But God wanted his people out. And he said, I'm going to bring my people out and I'm going to judge that nation for mistreating them. Your people will leave that land and they will take many good things with them. Ain't that what happened to the nation of Israel? They left out of there. Hallelujah. With borrowed stuff. And then God allowed them to walk through the Red Sea and the Pharaoh and his army came behind them and the waters came together, swallowed up Pharaoh and his army. They had many good things. Hallelujah. Now look at this in Acts 7, verses 6 and 7. We see it in the New Testament, God talking about this same situation. And God spake on this wise, that his seed shall sojourn in a strange land, that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And afterward, they shall come forth and serve me in this place. Hallelujah. I said this is Acts 7, verses 6 and 7, that says this. God said, I'm going to bring them out and they're going to serve me. You see, whenever you're not born again and you still want to be in the club, still want to drink wine, that is a what? A slave's mentality. That's not a leadership mentality. Because, see, when you operate as a leader, you want to worship the true and the living God. Hallelujah. And see, over in Egypt, they had gods, G, small g-o-d-s. They had gods that they can see. They had gods that they could touch. They had gods that could not hear themselves or see themselves, but they could see the idols. They could see the gods that they had. They had the God that handled the water. That the God of the frogs and all that stuff. They had a different God for everything. But the nation of Israel only had one God. And we only got one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And this one God is invisible. Hallelujah. And see, when you are a slave, you can only worship what you can see. But when you are in leadership... You can worship by faith because you walk by faith and not by sight. That's what leaders do. Slaves walk by sight. Leaders walk by faith. We're called to worship God in spirit and in truth. We worship a God we cannot see, 
but we know we know he's here. We know he's where praise and worship is. Glory to God. Moses was a Hebrew, but he was raised up in Pharaoh's house as a free man and as a leader. This is powerful. Moses, y'all know what happened with Moses. Moses, glory to God, in order for his mother and father to save him, they hid him. And we know what happened, that Pharaoh's daughter sees this little baby, amen, and she gives this baby really to Moses' mother. And Moses' mother, watch what God does, Moses' mother ends up nour nourishing him as a leader instead of a slave in, in Pharaoh's house, as an Egyptian, even though he's a Hebrew. Glory to God. God had that thing set up so wonderfully. In fact, look at it, Exodus chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and go to Acts 7, verses 21 through 25. The Bible said, and this is Exodus 2, verses 9 and 10, and Acts 7, 21 and 20 through 25. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give thee thy wages. Good grace somebody. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Ah, hallelujah. Drawn out. This boy was drawn out. The church is the called out. The drawn out. <laughs> we are called out people. And Moses, hallelujah, watch what happened. Moses is a Hebrew. We know what happened early in Moses' life. He ended up killing an Egyptian who was bothering the, the, the Hebrew brother. And, and he separated his brothers, killed them, uh, uh, killed the uh, Egyptian at first. And then later on, his brother and the Hebrew brother was fighting. Moses tried to separate them. They said, are you going to kill us today? like you did the Egyptian on yesterday, and Moses runs for his life. But God wanted Moses to be a what? A leader. Now watch this. He's a leader that was raised in Pharaoh's house. He's raised as a leader without a slave mentality. Good gracious somebody. Hear me. <laughs> Moses was able to lead because even though he was and a Hebrew, he had been raised as an Egyptian, which means he had sold the finest. He had sold the best of life. So Moses was able to lead a people without a slave mentality because nobody with a slave mentality deserves to lead. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Nobody with a slave mentality deserved to lead. Because, see, people with a slave mentality are going to operate in fear. People with a slave mentality are going to operate in doubt. People with a slave mentality are going to put you in a frenzy when trouble shows up. But when you got a leadership mentality, that's why we're talking about break free. It's time too long have people who have sat in the church month after month year after year, but still haven't allowed a slave mentality to get out of them. You got to renovate your mind and renew yourself in your mind so you can get rid of a lack mentality, a not enough mentality, a broke mentality, a poverty mentality, a sickness mentality. You got to get in your mind that I am called to be well, that I am saved to prosper. That third John verse two is my reality. I'm going to stand on it that God wants me to prosper and be in health even as my soul prosper. That every sickness that tries to attach itself to me is trespassing. It needs to get off my property. This is God's property. I am God's property. I've been bought with a price. So sickness and disease is trespassing. Has no business touching me. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. And I refuse to operate like a slave when God has called me to be a leader. <laughs> Woo! Watch this now. 
Acts 7, 21 through 25 says, and when he was cast out, this is Acts 7, 21 through 25. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses, watch what happened. See, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. See, Moses did not have the mentality of a slave. Because he had been nourished in Pharaoh's house. He had seen the best. Moses was wearing the best of clothes. Moses was eating the best of food. Moses was living large. So that when he led the people, he wasn't leading them with a slave's mentality. He was leading them with a leadership mentality. Oh, y'all hearing me. Y'all him. You, you got to understand this because you can't afford in this season of your life to be under a, a poor mouth leader, under a leader that don't want to believe in prosperity, don't want to believe that you're supposed to prosper on your job. Listen at me, woman of God. Listen at me, man of God. Whatever you put your hands to, you're supposed to prosper. I remember years ago going, shout out again to Sister Tasha Aline. She Happy birthday to you, Tasha. Amen. Listen at me. I remember years ago going to her shop where she was written that place. And I remember when I walked in there, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want her to own. And I said to her, I said, Tasha, God wants you to own. I said, either this man going to sell you this place or you're going to have to buy your own. Why? Because written is a slave's mentality. And you got to get rid of that slave's mentality and go into ownership. Remember, they had no land here. They weren't owners. They were working and providing for Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And then this wicked Pharaoh got so mad at them that he took away their straw for them to make bricks and required the same amount of bricks. Don't they? Uh, excuse me. Doesn't that sound like what the society is doing today? Taking away stuff, taking away people's 401k, taking away people's retirement, taking away this, taking away, and still requiring the same work ethnic. And you got to break free and say, wait a minute here. God did not call me to be a slave. God called me to be a leader. God called me to control. God called me to dominate. God called me to rule. God called me to break free from a slavery mentality. Yes. Look at this thing. The Bible said Moses was learning all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brother and the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him. And avenge him that was oppressed. See, he saw the Egyptian oppressing the Hebrew. And he, he, he avenged that Hebrew brother. And slew the Egyptian. Smote the Egyptian. Verse 25. For he supposed his brother would have understood. How that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. See, many of you don't understand the purpose of having a leader. The purpose of having a leader is to challenge you to come out of a slave's mentality, to come out of a borrower's mentality, to come out of a land of not enough into a land of more than enough, a land that's flowing with milk and honey. That's what God got for you. God wants you to have abundant life. Oh, glory. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He maketh you to lie down in green pastures, leads you beside the still waters. He restores your soul so that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Some people, they hop from church to church because they got a slave's mentality and not an understanding of leadership. When you understand leadership, you value good leadership 
as precious and you allow the man or woman of God to pour into you so you can keep moving from glory to glory to glory. You understand accountability. You understand what it means to serve. You understand what it means to be a workman. You understand that, hey, God has positioned me in a place of blessing. And he wants me to be a blessing everywhere I go to whoever I come into contact with. He doesn't want me to break rank. He doesn't want me to break fellowship. He wants me to know how to keep rank. See, you got to know how to keep rank and you got to know how to keep fellowship. The Bible said endeavoring to keep the unity. See, you're supposed to endeavor to keep unity. Not break rank, not break unity. But when people got a slave's mentality, that's all they do is constantly break rank, constantly break unity, constantly start trouble. They like Romans. They like a vagabond. The Bible speaks of the man in the Bible, Cain. Y'all remember Cain when he did what he did to his brother Abel? He became like a vagabond and he begged God not to let somebody kill him. Because oftentimes when you got a vagabond mentality, sooner or later you're going to get killed. You're going to get destroyed spiritually because why? God has raised up the fivefold ministry to feed you, especially pastors, to feed you with knowledge, feed you with understanding so you can grow. Hmm? Are you listening at me? You have to understand you can't eat everybody cooking. Sooner or later you're going to eat the wrong thing. You're going to get food poisoned. Uh huh. That's how food poison happens. We eat everybody cooking. We think we can go anywhere and eat anything and eat everywhere. And next thing you know, you got food poison. Why? Because God has set places for you to feast from. I never had food poison. Don't plan on having food poison because I don't eat everybody cooking and I don't eat everywhere. Are you listening at me? And some good restaurants, amen, where you can even get food poison because somebody in the back ain't taking care of stuff like they should. They, they putting stuff up that need to be thrown out. Oh, you hear what I said? They putting stuff up that need to be thrown out. And traditions of men need to be thrown out. Hallelujah. Stuff that don't edify us need to be thrown out. It ain't good for us. We can't grow with it. It'll keep us slaves rather than causing us to lead. Woo. Let me talk about another man. Not only did Moses, hallelujah, not have a slave mentality. He was able to lead because he had a leadership mentality. But there's another man named Naaman. Naaman was a tremendous leader. He was captain in the army of Syria. He was a mighty man of valor. Watch this. But he was a leper. He was a leper. And by him being a leper, it held him enslaved. And one day, a woman, I don't have time to read all of it. You can read in your spare time, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. Because again, I'm giving you this powerful word for tonight. Next Tuesday, we're going to do a little Bible study. But it's 4th of July. And I'm talking about break free. What are we talking about? Slavery versus leadership. Glory. You don't want to be a saved, born again, Holy Ghost filled woman, but still got a mentality as a slave. No, no, no. You want to be a saved, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized woman who got a mentality of a leader. Then understand that God wants me to not murmur, not complain, not gripe, or not be a busybody. See, when you're a gossiper, when you're a gossiper, that's a slave's mentality. When all you want to do is gossip about folks. Get on the phone and talk about folks and run folks down or get with your little friends and run folks down. Listen, you got to have some better friends than that. You got to have some friends that got a leadership mentality. Folks with a leadership mentality, they know that there's bigger fish to fry. They know that there's something big out here in the future that we're supposed to be laying hold of. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to reach for higher because you are called to lead. You're called to be in control. Woo! Lord. Glory to God. Lord. You can't do that gossiping about folks. So you need to read how that Naaman was told by one of his servants. The young lady said, wait a minute. 
If he was in a certain town, I look, look, I know a man of God that could help him get well. And you know the story of Naaman, Naaman, who's a leader. Hallelujah. He goes and he washes in the Jordan River. At first, he didn't want to do it. But the man said, wait a minute, if he had asked you to go in one of these other rivers, you would have done it. So Naaman washes in the Jordan River like the man of God tells him to do. Hallelujah. Because why? Naaman has pride. And Elijah, the man of God, didn't even go out to see him. He said, tell him to go wash. He said, wait a minute, this man ain't going to even come out to see me? No, because God was dealing with that pride in Naaman. See, some people proud. They broke, but proud. Ain't got nothing but just as proud they could be. Amen. You got to understand that that's not what it's about. It's about leading. God wants to position us for influence, for impact, to make a difference. And you can't do it if you got a slave's mentality. A slave always feel like they got to run over people, misuse people and abuse people to get to what they want and get to where they want. Because what they believe is that they ain't enough to get for everybody. But a leader understands that there's more than enough for all of us, that there is plenty. The earth is full of thy riches. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And there is more than enough for all of us. Now, let me deal with these how to break free and lead. There are three little points I'm going to give you tonight and we'll bring it to a close. What am I talking about? Break free. Break free. Somebody say, I'm already free. Yeah, the handcuffs off. Handcuffs been off black folks. Handcuffs been off us. Handcuffs off our hands. Handcuffs off our feet. But we try to help you break free to what God wants you to have. And God never intended you to operate in life as a slave. He wants you to operate as a free man. Glory to God. He wants you to stand fast in the liberty where with Christ, the anointed one has made us free. And he doesn't want us entangled again with the yoke of bondage or in that case, the law. We're under grace and truth. And so we are to operate like free men and women. Now watch this. Here we go. How to break free and lead. I'm glad y'all asked. How fast do I break free and lead? Number one, celebrate successes or victory. Celebrate successes or victories. I remember when I told Sister Tosh, I said, the Lord wants to bless you with more than one shop. Now she got those two shops. Amen. You never know what else God going to do. Amen. You got to understand. Well, see, somebody said, where the money come from? Listen at me. God got plenty. He owns it all. You got to receive the prophetic word even when you can't figure it out. I remember years ago when people told prophesied to us, my wife and I, that we were going to have plenty and, 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 and be able to lend and bless people. Glory to God. Our ministry would be a debt-free ministry. My God, I received it. I didn't try to understand it. I didn't try to figure it out. Why? Because leaders don't walk by sight. Leaders walk by faith. Hallelujah. Come on, type that in about yourself. I am walking by faith, not by sight. Come on, put that in, y'all. I am walking by faith and not by sight. That means I expect the favor of God to show up. I expect stuff to happen to me that won't happen to everybody. I expect victory. That's why right. leaders break free because they know how to celebrate successes or victories. When the last time you celebrated some of the successes and victories you got in your life? Hallelujah. I'm not talking about when you're at church. I'm talking about when you by yourself. Do you ever get by yourself and start celebrating the successes and the victories in your life. Hallelujah. That's what leaders do. Because they understand that whenever I need another victory, I can have one because I've already had some in my past. David knew he could beat Goliath because he already beat the lion and the bear. He was celebrating his victories. See, when you celebrate your success, when you celebrate your victories, these things are being in your mind. You got to celebrate your successes. If you make it through the day, thank you, Lord. You kept me this day. You blessed me this day. Thank you, Lord. Celebrate your successes. Celebrate your victories. 
Get away from those folks who are always trying to remind you of your failures, who are always trying to remind you of your flaws. Celebrate your victories and celebrate your successes. Tell it all the time. Don't get tired of telling your testimony. I love Dr. Ivy here because Dr. Ivy here, he always said, bring up my little bit of church building. He go back to his small beginnings and he starts celebrating all his victories, how he got this thing and got that thing. And now got jets, helicopter, several buildings, several places, several locations. He's celebrating his victories. That's what you and I supposed to do. I look back at my life. I celebrate how we started our little our, our church there at Mother Whitaker's uh, trailer. Yeah, we started in the trailer, Mother Whitaker and Brother Whitaker. Hallelujah. I celebrate the fact that we came from there, glory to God, to Granville Street. Hallelujah. And from Granville Street, glory to God, hallelujah, to Dow Street. And from Dow Street to Abermall Avenue. And from Abermall Avenue, we're going to move right up there on that main street. You got to learn how to celebrate your victories. I celebrate the fact, glory to God, that we've been on TCT and we've been on, glory to God, other uh, television stations preaching and pumping the word out. I celebrate the fact that we've written 13 powerful books to bless people lives. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, and I'm from a little yeah. town called Tarboro. I celebrated that you got a book called How to Overpower. I got a book called How to Overpower Discouragement. When you're discouraged, go to God. We can tell you how to do it, how to overpower discouragement. I celebrate the fact that years ago I prophesied over my wife that she was singing and write songs, and we got a CD called Determined. How I celebrate my victories. That's what leaders do. Leaders get up because they celebrate their successes. They celebrate their victories. Whether you celebrate them or not, you got to know, glory to God, that I'm going to celebrate my victories. And whether I celebrate them with you or not, you ought to celebrate your victories. Celebrate your successes. Celebrate the fact that the doctor saw a sickness in your body and ain't there no more. Celebrate the fact, glory to God, hallelujah, how God has healed you over and over and over and over and over and over again of headaches and back pains and leg pains and neck pains and celebrate it, glory to God. That's what makes you break free. You break free. Number two, feed your strengths and not your weaknesses. You got to feed your strength. And not your weaknesses. Talk to your strengths. Talk to that. That makes you strong. Speak to that area of your life. Where you're strong at. And keep right on feeding your strength. Talk to yourself. That's right. I did a teaching that's on uh, YouTube. And on Facebook. Called Talk to Your Soul. Talk to Your Soul. Go back and check that message out. Called Talk to Your Soul. I preached at Dr. Carl Vans Church there in Portsmouth, Virginia. Glory to God. Years ago, I mean Richmond, Virginia. It's Richmond, yeah. Richmond, Virginia. Many years ago. Talk to your soul. You got to talk to your soul. You got to talk to yourself. You got to strengthen yourself. You got to build your own self up. You got to talk to the strong person on the inside. Yeah, there's a strong person on the inside. But if you keep on talking to that little weak you, that weak you will mess you up. You got to talk to that strong you, that powerful you, that, oh, glory, that motivated you, that you that can stir you and drive you to your next level. Yeah, feed your strengths. Hallelujah. They used to say a long time ago, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Feed your faith. Feed your faith. Faith is how you overcome the world. This is the victory, 1 John 5 and 4, that overcometh the world, even our faith. You got to feed your faith. Feed your faith. Talk to your faith. Oh, and the third thing, here go my third and final point tonight. How to break free and leave. Eat and drink. And get up to occupy or transact business. This is critical. Eat and drink and then get up to occupy or to transact business. Every time you go to the house of God, listen at me, members of newness of life and members of a local church, whoever you are, 
When you go to the house of God, the man or woman of God is feeding you the word. You're to eat that word. You are to drink what they are giving you to drink and eat what they're giving you to eat. If it's healthy and wholesome, then you get up and go and occupy and transact business. When you walk out of the house of God, you should be walking out with a business mindset that this week I'm going to do business in the name of the Lord. This week, I'm going to make something happen in my life. See, there are two types of people. Those who sit back and wait for something to happen or those who go out and make something happen. The slave waits for something to happen. The leader goes and makes something happen. I'm talking to some people tonight that are ready to go make something happen. Am I preaching to anybody tonight? I know this is Tuesday night, but the preacher been kicking in there. Glory to God, the Holy Ghost moving. How, because many of us are sitting back like slaves rather than operating like leaders. Leadership, we're talking about not a slave, but being a leader. And leaders transact business. Leaders occupy till Jesus comes. Jesus told us to occupy. Look at the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 7 says, Neither be ye idolaters or people who worship idols, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. See, that's what happened to the nation of Israel. They were slaves. They ate the spiritual Meat, they drank the spiritual drink, and then they got up and played. That's how a lot of people do. Amen. Right after service, you think they're gonna come to you and talk about the word. You think they're getting the word in them, and they'll come and talk to you about something that ain't got nothing to do with the word. You be like, wait a minute here. This word was to get in you for you to eat it. The word was to get in you for you to drink it and then go. And occupy. Go and transact business. Go and be about the father's business. Go in your workplace and profit. Make a profit. Take this word and make a profit. Hallelujah. This word is to teach you how to prosper or to make a profit in life. It's to advance you. It's to move you. It's to cause you to get something and possess your inheritance. Glory to God. Look at what it says in Luke 19 verses 12 and 13 as I bring it to a close. Luke 19 verses 12 and 13 says, He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants. He had ten servants. Called all ten of them in there. And delivered them 10 pounds. Gave all of them. Now here's a different case than the one that town gave one five. No, this one right here. He had 10 servants. Gave all of them the same amount. And said unto them, occupy till I come. The word occupy means do business. Go transact business. Go invest what I've given you and create more. Go make something happen with what I've given you. See, God command to man is be fruitful and multiply. Be productive. Go make something happen. After we get through preaching this word on Sunday and, and, and whenever we preach it on Tuesday, Thursday, I expect people of God to take it and go make something happen. Go heal the sick with it. Go cast out some devils with it. Go on your job and get your bonus with it. Go get your raise with it. Go start the business. Go be an entrepreneur. Go make something happen because I'm not just preaching and teaching for you to say, oh, that was a good sermon. I want this word to produce something in your life. I don't want you to have a slave mentality. I want you to have a leadership mentality. Go be a powerful woman of God with it. Go be a powerful man of God with it. Go defeat the devil over and over again this week with this word. Do something with it. Occupy till I come. That's what he told him to do. Break free. 
Break free from a slavery mentality. Break free. Go take this word and lay hands on your own self. Hallelujah. And cause sickness off your own body. Hallelujah. Go do something with it. Listen, my brother and I, that's what we used to do. We used to hear our pastor preach that word. And man, we would get excited about that word. We would go bring somebody to the house of God next Sunday because of it. Or we would go on the job and tell somebody about it. Hallelujah. We would go make something happen with that word. See, that's what makes a man of God glad that he preached to you or glad he taught you because you're making some happen with what he's feeding you. You're making some take place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're not letting the devil beat you down like a cruel taskmaster. But you're taking this word and you're saying, Pastor, thank God for that message. Because of that message, I beat the devil up good fashion. I gave him a good old fashioned whipping. I gave him a good old fashioned beat down. I took those scriptures. I took that word and I put a whipping on the enemy this week. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I made the devil eat crow. I made the devil bow the knee to the word of God. Because the entrance of God's word, it giveth light and understanding to the simple. Oh, pastor, I took that word and I begin to say, why sit here and die? I'm getting up. I'm taking my land. I'm taking what belongs to me. I'm taking my peace. I'm taking my joy. I'm taking my mind back. I'm taking my heart out of the world and back into the kingdom. I'm going to walk as a man of God, as a woman of God. Your word is helping me. That's what it's all about. I got to go. I got to get out of here. Thank you for listening tonight. I know you got to go to the fireworks, but I don't have my fireworks tonight. I'm talking about breaking free. I'm talking about slavery versus leadership. Slavery versus leadership. Joshua and Caleb were of another spirit. They were of another spirit. They were able to go in when the others couldn't go in. Others died in the wilderness. But Joshua and Caleb went in. Why? They didn't have a slave's mentality. They had a warrior's mentality. They had a leadership mentality. That's why God made them elders. They were leaders. They were leaders. They weren't slave mentality people. They were leaders. And when you are a leader, you function different. You do life different all the way. And that's what God wants for his church. He wants us to stop seeing ourselves as slaves. You could have a lot of money and still have a slave mentality. You could have a big house and still have a slave mentality. We want you to have the house, the money, the car, have it all and have more importantly, a leadership mentality that I will not die, but I will live and I will declare the works of the Lord. Leaders function different than slaves. And that's what God wants us to know. Hey, he's given us this word so we can function as leaders and no longer bow. Hallelujah. They sing that song. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. Hallelujah. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Hallelujah. I'm free. That was the, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Sing it. Sing it. No longer bound. Come on. Help me sing it, Pastor. Me. Chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free. That's what God wants for us. Be free. It's time to be free. No more chains holding us. I'm out of time. I got to go out of here. Thank you for watching tonight. I hope this message bless you on the 4th of July. Again, on behalf of my wife and I, we celebrate you on the 4th of July. We say to all of you at NOLCC, one of the greatest churches in all the earth and all the world. We love you so much and we're here to help you break free, help you walk as leaders. Hallelujah. Leaders is bigger than the title. It's about a mindset and God wants you to have a mindset to lead. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't forget the scripture that we're dealing with. During the month of July is the book of Psalms. Amen. We're dealing with Psalms, what is it, 28? We're looking at Psalms 28 
and uh, it's verse number 14. Mm -hmm. a, uh, yes, yeah, Psalms, let me get it right quick. Psalm 28, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, wait a minute, let me get it right quick. Uh, I just looked at it this morning. Amen. I know what it says. Talk about the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Amen. And uh, I want to get that for you real quick. Uh, okay, here it is. Hallelujah. Okay, Psalm 25 and 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 25 and 14. Psalm 25 and 14. Look at it in the morning. Look at it before you go to bed at night. I looked at it this morning. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Again, happy birthday to all of you. July people, happy birthday. Amen. We salute you. And uh, somebody else had a birthday too, didn't he? Uh, I thought it was somebody else. Okay. It's a lot of us. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Some of you got birthdays later on coming up. That's right. That's what it is. Some of you got birthdays. We're going to talk, talk about you and say happy birthday to you as we get closer to your day. Amen. But uh, we thank God. I think uh, Sister Rachel had one coming up. Amen. Some others. Yeah, and some others. Right. But anyway, but right now we're just celebrating the one that did. Happy birthday, Sister Demetrius and Sister Tasha Bishop and Bishop Blaylock. Blaylock. Happy birthday to you all. We love you guys. Y'all be encouraged. Listen, if you desire to be saved, hallelujah, I want you to be saved. God wants you to be saved. The people of God wants you to be saved. You just got to want to be saved. Get away from that slavery mentality. Come out of Egypt. Come out of bondage. And let's go and be the leaders that God has called us to be. Leaders do things differently. God wants you to do it differently. Listen, you want to be saved? I want you right where you are to make a bold statement. Say, dear God, I need you. I am tired of being a slave to sin and darkness. I'm ready to serve you until I die. I'm ready to worship you in spirit and in truth. Take my life. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Yeah, that means you believe that Jesus died on that cross, shed his blood, gave his life, rose again just for you. Give us a call if you pray that prayer with us at 252-563-5382. If you're a backslider, come on back home. Come on and serve God like you need to. Get rid of that slavery mentality and come on in and let's lead the way. Let's be the salt of the earth. Let's be the, excuse me, the light of the world. We ought to be salt. We ought to be light. We ought to be examples in the name of the Lord. Shout out to all those who tune in today. Thank you. You can go back and if you tune in late, check out the message. Don't forget each and every time you come on, hit that thumbs up button, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Amen. Hit the follow button. Hit the share button. Share these messages with your family. Share these messages with your friends. They need this kind of word. This is not fairy tale. This is not fantasy. This is how we are called to live and walk. And we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm telling you, we'll see it. Amen. And you don't have to faint. Psalmist said in Psalm 27 and 13, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God wants you to see his goodness. And manifest itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything you buy, he wants it paid off now. That's why he wants that car paid off now. That house paid off now. He wants to bring you into a place of debt freedom. So don't listen to that people tell you they ain't possible. They are lying to you. It is possible. Somebody say, oh, my salary, I can't do it. Shut up, shut up. Talk like a leader, not like a slave. I'm here to tell you, you can do it. God will give you a strategy. God will show you how to budget wisely, how to save your money in a wise way, and to come out of that bondage of being a borrower into being a lender. Every Tuesday night, we're here at 730. Every Thursday, amen, we're here at 7 o'clock. We'll be here this Thursday at 7 o'clock. The Lord said the same. And then every Sunday, we are back in the building at 10 a.m. Now, listen at me. Get to the house of God. I said, get to the, if you got to catch a cab, a train, a bus, a friend, a neighbor, do whatever it takes. Make arrangements to be there this Sunday at 10 a.m. Hallelujah. It's nothing like it. 
I'm telling you, I love God. And I love his presence. And that's what we're after. The presence of God. Not about the crowd. Sometimes you can be where a crowd is and ain't no glory. You want to be where the glory of the Lord is, where the presence of the Lord is, so you can be healed, set free, and delivered, and walk as a leader. We're there every Sunday at 10 a.m. in person, and you that can't be in the Tarboro area, watch us at 1030 on Facebook and on YouTube. Tune in and watch us on YouTube if you didn't get Facebook. If you got Facebook, don't get YouTube. Whichever one you got, you can watch us. We come on at 1030. Amen. From our sanctuary, pouring into you a powerful, powerful word. And I guarantee your life will change because of it. And tonight's message will be again. Yeah, tonight's message will be on YouTube in a few minutes. It's already on Facebook. You can watch it. But get it out to your neighbor. Get it out to your friend. How to break free. Slavery versus leadership. Again, if these messages are being a blessing to you, you get an opportunity to sow a seed. And we appreciate all our givers out there. Yeah. Listen, yeah. you are doing a wonderful job. Yeah. We appreciate you for sowing seed. Amen. You can, if you're not a, in a place where you can tithe and give offering, newness of life is a place to tithe. I guarantee you, you'll get back a return because we are doing right with every dollar you give us. Believe me, we are doing right because we have a great finance committee. We have great leaders in that area to make sure that everything is done up and above board. All right. Amen. Listen, there are several ways you can give to our ministry. You can donate something. Amen. By writing a check or money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. That mailing address again is Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Also, watch this. You can download the Vanco Mobile app. Download the Vanco Mobile app. You're going to see something that looks like this pop up, and you can type in Newness of Life Christian Center. That's why I show you this paper each and every time, trying to make you know what you're looking for so you'll know how to give in a technology way. And it'll be a blessing to you when you sow into our lives. Amen. Personally, to bless us personally, what you got to do is go to your cash app. You got to sow it as a gift and you sow it as a gift to my wife and I. Amen. For the word and our labor. We appreciate you that do do that. We thank you so very much. Amen. Because there's no way you can pay for a rich word like God is sending us. But we thank God for you that are sowing into us naturally because we're sowing into you spiritually. Listen, you go to your cash app, hit the dollar sign, type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. Cash app, dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. That's right. Put the E on the end. Amen. If you don't have cash app, you can write it to that same address, but on your check or on your money order or somewhere in the letter, stipulate that Bishop Sharp, this is for you. All right. Amen. If you are doing that, you go to P, write it to P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. All right. Now, listen, again, we got 13 powerful books. And if you don't have them, shame on you by now. But I'm going to just talk about one of them tonight. And that is this book right here, How to Overpower Discouragement. Discouragement is real. God wants you to win against it. He wants you to know how to overpower it and how to defeat it. This book can be yours by... Amen. Right now, our office is only four dollars, I think, per copy. Amen. But it takes a little bit to send it out to you. Amen. About two dollars more. So about five or six dollars. We can get this book to you. Amen. It is potent. It is loaded. They call our office at two five two six four one zero zero nine eight. And it can be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Amen. If you would like to have any of the other books, call the office two five two six four one zero zero nine eight. And let us know, Pastor, I heard you say you got 13 books with somebody. Please call us back and they'll call you back and tell you about all 13 of our books and what the price of them are and how you can get them. Amen. And be blessed by a good, good book. That's right. Nothing is more powerful than a good, good read. I love to read. And I'm telling you, reading helps you. 
It guards you. It protects you because more importantly, reading informs you. And when you get good information and you inform, you're not in that land of ignorance. Satan wants us to stay in the space of ignorance. And what God wants us to do is to not be ignorant. He calls us out of that space of ignorance over into the land of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So God wants you to be full of wisdom, full of knowledge, full of understanding. And I'm telling you, thank God for good books like we have. We have 13 powerful books that can be a blessing to you, that will strengthen you, that will fortify you and help you be effective in the things of God. All right. Thank you for watching tonight. We appreciate you. Have a blessed, blessed night. All right. Huh? I'm just trying to get all of that there, but I don't have to Okay. All right. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Everybody stay safe tonight. Okay. Have a happy 4th of July as you go to the fireworks. Amen. That'll be ringing out in a little while. Have a blessed night. You be careful. Be prayerful. Amen. We hope to see you Thursday at 7 o'clock. Be blessed.